When emergency services arrived at the scene, they found the sister's friend, 22-year-old Christopher Gall, in the street outside, screaming and bleeding from a shotgun wound to the face. Hello and welcome to my channel, I hope you are doing great. Today's video is quite a short one in itself, but there is plenty going on within the case itself, unfortunately for the people that were involved. If there are any cases you would like me to cover, I am more than happy for you to suggest them to me in the comments and I will do my best to do it for you. If you enjoy true crime, consider subscribing to the channel. This is the case of Malcolm Baker. At 9.12pm on Tuesday the 27th of October 1992, the first in a series of gunshots were heard at the Terrigal New South Wales home of 23-year-old Kerry Gannon and her 18-year-old sister Lisa. When emergency services arrived at the scene, they found the sister's friend, 22-year-old Christopher Gall, in the street outside, screaming and bleeding from a shotgun wound to the face. Also on the street outside the apartment was the dead body of Kerry and Lisa's father, 43-year-old Thomas Gannon, who had been visiting his daughters for a few days. Inside the apartment, Kerry's body was found still sat in a chair while Lisa's was found in a bedroom. Both had been shot dead. Lisa was eight months pregnant at the time and efforts were made to try to save her unborn baby without success. Lisa's fiancé, a policeman, learned of the deaths while he was at work. The killer was Kerry's ex-boyfriend, 45-year-old mechanic Malcolm Baker. The two had been together for several years before Kerry ended the relationship about six weeks prior to her death. Following the breakup, she had obtained a court order barring Malcolm from contacting her and authorities had revoked his weapons permit and confiscated a number of weapons from him after she had reported him for harassment. Unfortunately, there was at least one weapon that hadn't been confiscated, a sawn-off Remington 12-gauge double-barreled shotgun. It is believed that an ad in the Central Coast Express newspaper that was addressed to Kerry at her job in a nursing home and included the phrase, but I still love you, Mac, was placed by Malcolm. However, Kerry never even had the chance to see it as a newspaper came out on the day after Malcolm used his shotgun to first smash the front window of the Gannon's apartment and then shoot everyone inside. Just as, unfortunately, it was only the beginning of Malcolm's killing spree. After leaving his ex-girlfriend's apartment, Malcolm drove to Bateau Bay where his 27-year-old son David lived with his wife and baby. David's body was later found in the backyard of his home and he had been shot in the back of the head. After killing his own son, Malcolm drove about 9 miles to the Wyong home of 35-year-old Ross Smith and 25-year-old Leslie Reed, arriving shortly before 10pm. He shot and critically injured Leslie, then found Ross who he'd had a confrontation with about two years earlier over a business deal going sour, in the bath and shot him dead. Leslie died in hospital two hours later. The killing spree came to an end at around 11pm when Malcolm walked into a police station, handed over the shotgun and surrendered to the police. He was promptly arrested and charged with six counts of murder and one count of attempted murder. On the 6th of August 1993, Malcolm Baker was sentenced to life without parole for each of the six murders. In 2001, he became one of the first six inmates of Goulburn High Risk Management Unit. He remains incarcerated there to this day. That was the case of Malcolm Baker. From what I could find, no one really knows why he chose to do what he did, presumably to get back at his ex-girlfriend for leaving him and then took the opportunity to get rid of everyone else that had crossed him at some point in his life. Whatever the reason, he deserves nothing less than life in prison. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like, but until I see you again, please be safe, be well, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.